Hey everyone, this is Marty from Down the Rabbit Hole Travel. Today is not a travel video, but it is a bit of a travel and escape video. Many, many people have been requesting a second Christmas morning escape room game. I guess you guys are really like locking up presents. And so I have designed one just for you. This one is called the Sprite on the Light. Stay tuned to see what it's all about. filming this, it is mid-September. There's green leaves and green grass outside. There's not really any Christmas decorations around my house. So I drug this little tree up and that's basically all the Christmas decor you're going to get for this video. This game comes as a downloadable PDF escape room game that you can print at home and you can purchase it for yourself for $10 Canadian. Yes, I like to really make things pricey for you. Just kidding, I think $10 is pretty reasonable. And because it's a DIY escape room game, I'm gonna do this video in two parts. The first part, I'll show you kind of how to set everything up, how to prepare certain clues, cause some of them are a little tricky this time around, and how to prep your game space. The second part of the video, I will show you how the game works and we'll go through it step by step. This video is your escape room guide. It's your setup guide, it's your instruction guide, it's your how to play guide. This video will be your go-to. That way my PDF document isn't super giant big and take forever to download for you. So if you decide to download, you will get a PDF package. Three of the sheets will be just whole pages and you will not cut them out. I like to laminate everything because that's just who I am as a person. Some of the other pages will have items that it's clear, you need to cut these things out. As you watch the video and you watch me set the game up, you will notice which items I have cut out that aren't part of one giant page. You will also need to have a variety of locks and lockable boxes. I have tutorial videos on how to create a lockable box out of just a plain old wooden dollar store box if that's something you're interested in learning to do. And you can buy locks off Amazon. I get a lot of mine at the dollar store, the hardware store. So you can be creative with that. But if you don't have lock boxes or locks, you could just use envelopes like mailer envelopes, seal them shut with painter's tape, and then players can just give you a code verbally. So you don't have to spend a ton of money to make this happen. Although the more boxes and locks you collect, the more little games you can play. First step, print the PDF pages in color. I recommend going to Staples for cheap color printing. The Sprite page, black and white snowflake page, and intro letter remain intact as whole pages, no cutting required. All of the other prop pages need their smaller pieces cut out. Watch the whole video if you need guidance on what to cut. Please make sure you cut up the colored snowflake pie pieces and not the black and white ones. The keys were the trickiest pieces to prepare. I found that scissors were too bulky to get into all of the corners as the keys need all of the teeth cut cleanly. The geometric shapes at the top of the keys also need to be hollowed out. To do this, I used an X-Acto knife. The circular tree ornament needs the hole at its top to be punched out so it can be hung on your tree. You're gonna need to do some quick baking because you need to make some salt dough snowballs. The recipe for the snowballs is in the PDF. Add the water slowly as you may not need it all. Too much water makes the dough too sticky to use. Bake the tag that says 7128 into one of the snowballs. You will also need some physical items. You're gonna need a present to lock up. I just bought myself some new perfume today, so I'm locking up my own perfume for this video. You're gonna need some mistletoe, and since it's not Christmas right now, it's September, I just bought some random leaves at the dollar store and wrapped them with red ribbon to make them look like mistletoe. And somewhere in one of these boxes are some red and green candies, so you're also going to need to buy some red and green candies. I used Skittles. Now that you've got all the little pieces of the paper cut out, let's set up the boxes. I want you to start by locking up your present. 
I got this big bin. It's a craft box, I think, from the dollar store. Works like a charm. Slide the blue things shut. And now you're gonna get a five digit lock. I've got this off of Amazon and thread it through the hole. The code for this lock is set to 48930. To change the settings on this type of lock, you just take the end piece and spin it so that this little toggle here points to the top. And then whatever you spin your dials to become the new lock setting. So you wanna set this one to 48930. I also want you to make sure that every time you lock one of your boxes with a combo lock, you remember to reset the lock to zero, zero, zero. Cause nothing is worse when you actually leave the combination on here and people just click the lock open. Make sure you reset it to zero. This box we're gonna set in a prominent place in the room so that it's visible as soon as your players walk in. And you're just gonna place the introduction note on top. Next in your setup is placing the sprite on the light. I normally don't have a lamp in this room, but for this game, the lamp lives here and so does the sprite. After you've cut out the Christmas tree wheel, put a ribbon or if you're cheap like me, a bent up paper clip in through the hole and hang it on your Christmas tree. Ideally, it will be Christmas time when you play this game and you will have other ornaments and your tree won't look quite as sad as mine. Take your cut up snowflake pie pieces and hide them randomly around the room. Inside lockbox number one, I like to layer the interior of my box with tissue paper so that when I crumple it up, players cannot lift the box a crack and peek inside. So add your tissue paper. And then inside box one goes the reindeer key, the Christmas tree globe with all the letters on it and see how I've cut it out so that the bottom remains intact. And a small hammer, stole this from my daughter's toolkit. This box gets locked with a small key lock and I like to put colored marks on my locks, which then match up with the key so that players don't put the wrong key in the wrong lock and break them. They can use the colors to help match. Then take the key for this box and thread it onto a piece of string or once again, if you're cheap like me, a bent up paper clip. This is the fake mistletoe that I made from the dollar store. Take the key that's threaded onto string or paper clip, tuck it into the leaves a little bit and hang it on that string. So you can kind of see the clip, but you can't tell there's a key. So when you hang this mistletoe, hang it so the clip is not visible. This sheet of paper can just go on the ground in the center of the room, or if you want, you can just kind of tuck it somewhere in the room so that it's pretty clearly visible. We don't want this one hiding. The little tag in the box that had the number 7128, I baked it into this snowball. Then you're gonna take your cooled snowballs and package them up. And add your bag of snowballs to lock box number two. So I have my box, I have my tissue paper, and I've added my snowballs. Into lockbox number two, I also want you to put the snowman key. To secure lockbox number two, we're gonna use a four letter word lock set to sled. And if you'll notice, I didn't have the letter S, so I just took a tiny little square of painter's tape, stuck it on my dial and wrote the letter S. So don't panic if you don't have all the letters that you need, just get creative. Remember to set your lock back to zero. In lockbox number three, you're gonna have a little bag or container, whatever you have available, of red and green candies. The trick is make sure you have exactly nine candies. Add your bag of candies to your box. 
Also include the little mathematical equation here that goes inside and the star key. You're gonna secure lockbox number three with a four digit combination lock set to 7128. Lockbox number four, let's add our tissue. And inside this box, we put the alphabet key code for the sprite picture, the mittens key, and a key for our next lock box. On top of the box, we're gonna add this tag, the one about counting numbers. And I like to use just painter's tape because it goes on nice and easy and then it doesn't rip any paint off afterwards. To secure this box, we're gonna use a five digit combination lock set to 31527. And always remember to reset to zero. Last but not least, we have lockbox five. Our final box with the gift inside is lockbox six, but we started with that when we were setting up. So this is lockbox five. I just used, honestly, a pencil case from the dollar store. I glued the front zipper secure so it can't be unzipped. And I put a little piece of hard foam inside just so people can't cheat and bend the pencil case and zip it open. So that foam keeps it so that it's uncheatable. And inside this one, we're gonna put this page with the weird geometrical shapes and the scrambled up letters. That just goes in here. And we're gonna zip this shut and then we'll take our lock from the key lock that we just put into the previous box and thread it through the holes on the zipper. And that makes a quick little lock box, nice and cheap. And the final step is to just find easy little hiding spots for all of these little lock boxes somewhere around your room. And thusly, you are all set up for your game. Now it's time to invite in your players. My mom and my sister came over for a visit and I have roped them into playing the game. They are very unenthusiastic about willing participants. The game begins when the game master draws players' attention to the locked gift with the letter on top. The letter lets players know that this is all the sprites doing. Players are told in the letter to check out the sprites' wings, which have strange writing on them. But how to read it? As they search the room, your players will begin to collect the snowflake pie pieces. They must find all eight to solve this puzzle. Someone should recognize that the black and white snowflake page has all matching snowflake shapes. Players need to match the snowflakes and their silhouettes, and then use the numbers 1 through 8 to spell a word. Mistletoe! Mistletoe! Once they are alerted to look for mistletoe, they should find it and the key hidden inside. <gasps> the key opens lockbox number one, which has the hammer, the snow globe clue, and the reindeer key. Hopefully by now, players have found the clue ornament on the Christmas tree. They can use this tool, which is similar to reading a compass, to translate the snow globe's message. The tree's tip points to the correct letter it represents. C O D E code is S L E sled. Of course, the code sled opens lockbox two. Inside is the snowman key and the bag of snowballs. 
Players can crack open the baked snowballs with the hammer. Perfect. How did you get that, Mom? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Count on the numbers. Okay, seven, one, two, eight. Oh, this one definitely needs a hammer. They may or may not figure out that they don't have to actually break open all of the snowballs. That's a trick Can one, two. Okay, 7128. Oh, 7128. Oh, for heaven's <laughs> sakes. Like, what do we do? <laughs> we have a four digit number. Okay. Mm. 7128 opens lockbox three, which has a bunch of goodies inside the candies, the incorrect math equation, and the star key. Players can count each color of candy, but they won't know what to do with that information quite yet. So one, two, three. The next step is a little tricky. The tag on lockbox four asks players to count on the numbers and refers to something that doesn't add up. Well, 7 minus 2 equals 8 is definitely wrong, but if players count on the numbers, i.e. count the lines comprising each digit in the equation, they'll get a code. Because they need a five-digit code, they also have to count the lines in each symbol. The number 7 has three lines, the minus symbol has one line, the 2 has five lines, etc. Eventually, they'll get a code of 31527. Oh, you did it! Inside lockbox number four is the mittens key, the sprite wing decoder, and an actual key. That's a two. Two. Oh, okay. Players can use the decoder to translate what's written on the sprite's wings. It will eventually say one star two reindeer, three green candies, four snowman, five mittens. The key opens lockbox five, which contains a sheet of jumbled letters and some geometric shapes. Players need to line up the shapes on the paper with the hollowed out shapes on the keys. The teeth of the keys will then point to certain letters on the paper, spelling out words. Putting the words in the correct order, as found on the sprite's wings, and factoring in the green candies, players will get a final code of 48930. This opens lockbox 6, and players can finally retrieve their gifts. Yay! <laughs> If you are one of my lovely viewers who was requesting a second Christmas-themed game, here is all your order information, which will also be in the description box below. Please remember to include your own email address, so I know where to send the PDF, as well as the name Sprite on the Light, so I make sure I send you the correct Christmas game. Thanks to everyone who comes to visit my channel, whether it's for a escape room adventure or travel inspiration and information. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to help my channel grow.